हेलो फ्रेंड्स मैं सेल डॉक्टर सिद्धार्थ मेडिसिन रेजिडेंट फाइनल ईयर जेल एंड मेडिकल कॉलेज अजमेर टुडे आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू इन ब्रीफ द डायबिटीज मैनेजमेंट इन सर्जिकल पेशेंट्स मींस पेशेंट्स हु आर अंडर गोइंग सर्जरी सो हाउ डू यू मैनेज द डायबिटीज एज वी नो द सर्जरी इज ए a kind of stress event on the body but it is necessary to be done in diabetic patients as well as we all have heard that diabetes should be well controlled during the surgery but how how to get it controlled so there are two three things which i'll tell you that uh, <clears throat> any patient posted for surgery as we know <clears throat> has to be kept fasting at least overnight and during the peri operative period and <clears throat> enteral feeding is not started in especially in the gastrointestinal tract surgeries and it is started earlier in the other parts surgeries so first thing to be done is to stop the oral hypoglycemic drugs that is oha or oral anti diabetic agents whatever you may call them means oral medications has to be stopped at least day or two days before <clears throat> but in case of one special class of the drug that is known as sglt2 inhibitors means you must have heard the name that is dapa gliflozin kena gliflozin empa gliflozin and uh, there is one more and one more drug is a2 gliflozin so what the sglt2 inhibitors they cause renal glycosuria means glucose is excreted through the renal through the kidneys with urine and uh, they are notorious to cause euglycemic ketoacidosis means sugar levels are normal but still patient can slip into uh, diabetic ketoacidosis so first thing is this that you have to stop oha and in case of the sgl22 it has to be stopped at least one week prior to death because pharmacological effect <coughs> of sgl22 can remain in the body for around a week next thing then we come to insulin management sliding scale is not preferred sliding scale you know what do you mean by sliding scale that if glucose rises more than this level you give this much insulin that is short acting insulin because that causes the insulin deficient state in the body and patient falls into hypo uh, that is hypoinsulinemia or we can say the insulin deficiency and whenever there will be insulin deficiency in the human body during stress event stress stage there will be chances of probability of falling into diabetic ketosis this will be more <clears throat> now we come to insulin management it depends on the duration of the surgery how that on the day of surgery if surgery is more than 4 hours long <clears throat> and before we we going to duration of the surgery according to american diabetes association ada the target peri operative blood glucose is 80 to 180 mg per deciliter that is peri operative and overall in patients who are not being given enteral feeding we should not go for strict glycemic control strict glycemic control that is 80 to 110 so in surgical patients we target for moderate control but for peri operative period as i have told you it is 80 to <clears throat> 180 now there are two things that if surgery is longer than 4 hours so as we know surgery is longer peri operative period will also be longer so in this case we give basal insulin on the prior night and insulin infusion 
is to be started on the coming morning <clears throat> so before going to that let me explain you that there are two three four kinds of the insulins one is ultra short acting ultra short acting means that insulin lispro and all they manage prandial hyperglycemia <coughs> means if during uh, meals that immediately after meals our blood glucose rises and more so in diabetic patients so short ultra short acting insulin will manage it is like the natural secretion from the human body and another is short acting that is in our government hospital we are using ins regular insulin that regular insulin is insulin r that is short acting another one is insulin intermediate that is nph another one is insulin glargin or lentus they are long acting insulin so <clears throat> how do we use them the infusion is always of the regular insulin and uh, glargin is a long acting insulin so i'll explain to you with in terms of these two insulin so how much of the long acting insulin is to be given on the prior night of the surgery that is it is reduction in 20 to 50% for example a patient was already taking and especially the type 1 diabetics type 1 as you all know insulin dependent suppose he was taking 20 units of the glargin after dinner before sleeping then we will reduce this 20 to 50% according to the situation so for this we need patients uh, sugar readings for uh, ideal sugar readings are in the patient in whom we want best of the blood glucose monitoring and the best of the insulin management is six times in a day at least for one or two days what are these six time fasting blood glucose after breakfast before lunch after lunch before dinner or supper whatever you call or after dinner <clears throat> so how do we reduce suppose if he was taking 20 glargin then we will reduce it to 10 or 12 or maximum is the 15 why do we reduce this because as we know the patient is going to be remain fasting and uh, and in the surgery is longer than 4 hours as i was telling you the regimen is we give insulin infusion at the rate of uh, 0.5 to 1 units per hour what do you mean by 0.5 to 1 units i explain you in the simple terms that is Uh, 15 units of the insulin traditionally we are making the drip or infusion of the 15 units of the insulin in 500 ml of the normal saline in case of the bottle and in case of the infusion pump we give 50 units of the insulin in 50 ml of the ns so what will be the rate so in case of the 500 ml bottle so 50 units of the insulin if we give at the rate of 20 ml per hour as we know 20 ml per hour means in 24 hours how much it becomes 4 24 into 2 that is 20 that is 480 ml and around 500 ml so in 24 hours means 15 units that is not according to our plan so what we want to give is in 48 hours around 48 to 15 units so the infusion we start is around 10 ml per hour that is the one thing and uh, on this is uh, we are talking of the regular insulin and i told you that we give long acting insulin and it is not a fixed formula it has to be increased to 20 ml per hour also if the patient's uh, blood sugar is uh, as i told you that is more than in the range range is 80 to 180 if it is going 200 then someone has to be there all the time attending to the patient that is nursing management is very important and the housemen's residents role is also very important in this so initially we have to take hourly or two hourly readings so if it is going suppose 100 or less than 80 so you have to immediately 
uh, hold it withhold it for one or two hours then if it is again slipping more then you have to restart it so it is fine tuning that is very important then we come to what is known as the if second regimen if surgery is less than four hours according to the standard book of the medicine harrison's principles of the internal medicine 21st edition rather if surgery is less than four hours in this case we can manage the patient on subcutaneous insulin subcutaneous preprandial and long acting insulin that is especially when the short surgery that is non gastrointestinal surgeries so one more thing which i want to explain you preprandial there are two three words which are quite uh, seemingly difficult but they are not preprandial means just before the meal and interprandial means between the meals postprandial means after the meals and basal the word basal insulin means that is something which maintains the insulin in the body at least for the 24 hours and for the longer hours so basal insulin is always like a plateau graph the depot have we have given it releases slowly 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 and it maintains um, but in that patient also a patient take the food blood sugar is going to rise so in these condition we have to cover preprandial insulin as well so basal plus preprandial that is that is short acting insulin preprandial insulin we give is short acting insulin that is insulin r so how we calculate insulin r there are there is very simple formula if the type 1 patient is there or a very lean patient what do what is the meaning of medical meaning of the lean patient surgical meaning may be different mean patient means in that patient insulin resistance is less likely it is less and obese patient insulin resistance is expectedly more so in lean patient one unit of the insulin is calculated above for the blood sugar above the target range for example our target is 1 180 okay or in uh, when patient has already been operated uh, operated and in 2 3 days have been <coughs> covered so our target will be that uh, to keep it to up to 140 to 180 okay so in that case that is modest control in that case suppose sugar of the some patient is around 250 so we will calculate insulin so in a new patient calculation is different in a suppose patient who was already taking suppose a patient was taking 666 and uh, 18 glargin why i gave you this example because usually we cover 50% of the short acting that is preprandial insulin and 50% of the basal insulin this is a rough formula it is honored since long times so for every 50 mg of the blood glucose rise we cover one unit of the insulin but in case of uh, additional one unit of the insulin in case of uh, suppose obese individual we have to count is that is called as correction factor in medicine that is 2 units of the insulin for every 50 mg and now i am going to tell you that uh, with insulin infusion we should always take care of what is known as hypokalemia if patient's potassium is on lower side that is less than 3.3 milliequivalents per deciliter in that case we should be cautious cautious to start the insulin infusion as you all know insulin infusion causes the intracellular shifting of the potassium and hypokalemia and hypokalemia can be dangerous so at least maintain the potassium in the normal range and if potassium is not in the range we have to correct the hypokalemia then only we can start the infusion and along with the infusion we usually give half of the 
half of the rate of the kcl it is as a rule suppose you are giving the 20 ml per hour of the insulin infusion it is 10 ml per hour of the potassium that is kcl infusion so remember always but in subcutaneous doses it is not required but in infusion it is required and now how to restart the oral antihypoglycemic agents the patient has recovered patient has started taking the oral food in that case that we can restart a patient is not in acidosis and we can start oral antihypoglycemic drugs if patients urea creatinine that is renal functions and liver functions are normal if renal function and liver functions are not in the limits they are not normal that is gfr is decreased in these patients with the advice of the attending physician we should discharge the patient on insulin only and on at home self monitoring of the blood glucose is very important and how do we man monitor the blood glucose that is uh, by glucometer that is capillary blood sugar and uh, how do we advise insulin that we give insulin on the we give subcutaneously on the abdomen on the thigh and on the arm and in the same day even should follow the same site there is a rule suppose if you started on the abdomen in the morning so you should give the, all the insulin doses on the abdomen around the amylicus it is two finger away from the amylicus why it is so you will be surprisingly you will be surprised to know that the release rate of the insulin is different and the different size so it can fluctuate the blood sugar we have to follow this and finally i want to tell you that foods with high glycemic index must be avoided must be avoided and good sleep is to be ensured high glycemic index food i'll let me explain in very brief in the cereals it is rice and uh, another is uh, what is known as maize that is corn they have high glycemic index in the vegetables that is one is potato one is sweet potato and carrot they are very high glycemic index and fruits grapes are not high glycemic index mango so not allowed high glycemic index and similarly what is known as chiku high glycemic index banana high glycemic index not allowed so manage this accordingly and carefully thank you so much to you all surgeons my surgery friends and all my medicine resident friends thank you